holy crap, it's happening. Oh my God, I think it's happening. I just have not even processed <laughs> the extent of all of this. This is insane. This is a lot harder <laughs> to read than I thought it was gonna be. So I start like booking it. He honestly thought that like that was it. I was just like, I was just not coming. It's just, it was so surreal. It was like completely in a movie. And I just remember from that moment on, like time just kind of like stopped. This is like the best thing that's ever happened to me. So. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a new video. If you are new here, my name is Andrea and today I'm doing something a little bit different. I am sharing a very personal story. It is the story of my engagement and how my boyfriend proposed to me. We're going back to Wednesday, August 15th, 2018. I just finished writing my last exam and my boyfriend, Mick, he asked me to call him after I was done. And I just said, I'm coming home now. And uh, he just said, okay, see you in half an hour. So I get home, I pull into the driveway. And as I'm getting out of my car, I notice this sign on the front door. Now, I didn't think much of it at the time, but then when I got closer, I realized it was printed like off the computer, not a handwritten note. And so I knew something was up at that moment and cue the very first video that i recorded to document what was happening hi <laughs> holy crap um i just got home and i saw this on the door then on my plate there was a note oh first i read letter one um and then i saw a little sticky note under the food on my plate that said to look in the fridge where I found letter number two, which then told me to send me specific emoticons to indicate that I have gotten that letter. And then I was to take my pina colada, which was in the fridge and go on the patio and play the selected playlist that he had five songs picked out for me. And the last one was Taylor Swift's Are You Ready For It? Nice one. <laughs> and then I found letter number three, which is where I got my detailed, detailed set of instructions. Like I'm talking, he asked me about the donut in my hair that I make those buns when I put my hair up. He mentioned that in case I want to put my hair up. He even took a picture of himself in his suit so that I would have an appropriately matching outfit. And I have an international flight booked this Friday. Like what? <laughs> what is going on? I am basically living a movie right now. Also gonna mention that I burst out crying at letter number two. So there's that. <laughs> this is like the best thing that's ever happened to me, so. Okay, so like I shared in that clip, the letter was very, very detailed. I'm just gonna kind of summarize the key points here. You will also be traveling solo for a part of your journey and the next time we see each other, it will be on a different side of one of the oceans. You have two full days before you depart. Friday, August 17th in the evening is your international departure flight from Pearson Airport. This was the big point here though. You will need a summer dress with heels that will match me in the following semi-formal light gray suit with a blue tie and tan cognac shoes. And then he just told me how our dog Charlie was in good hands and that he'll be completely taken care of while we're away. And that I would have access to letter number four on Friday at nine o'clock in the morning so that I should definitely be home at this time. It's now Friday morning. I still don't know where I'm going. I just know that I have a flight that day. I finally get a message that morning from Mick and it is directing me to look behind one of the paintings in our living room. He told me to look behind the painting with the Eiffel Tower on it and that I would find letter number four and five. I was to read letter number four first and letter number five was literally to be opened like right at the airport. So in that really other detailed letter, he had already arranged for my dad to drive me to the airport. So I just had to basically pack up my car and head on over to my dad's house. Alrighty, we are packed. We are ready to go. 
So I'm gonna be off to the airport soon. I'm actually really freaking out. I seem very, very calm, but I am like, I just have not even processed <laughs> the extent of all of this. This is insane. Okay, so until next time. All right, I'm in the airport and I'm gonna find out where I'm flying right now. Oh my God. Okay, so as you can see, I arrive in Paris and I have letter number six, which is to be opened once I get into my hotel room in Paris. And it was included in that big envelope, which was letter number five. Now, before I read this, there's just one thing that I want to note. So my flight was not direct to Paris. I had to do a layover in Iceland for an hour. And from the time that I came home and my boyfriend was not home, I just assumed that he was already at the destination where I was going to meet him. So what I learned after the fact was that he actually left on that exact same Friday as I did just a few hours earlier. And so when I landed in Iceland, he was in the Iceland airport at the same time that I was. So he ended up like hiding on the other side of the airport so that I would not see him at all. But I thought that was just so crazy that we were actually in Iceland at the exact same time. Okay, so on to letter number six. Bonjour honey, letter number six. This is the last one, I promise. If you are reading this, you have safely made it to the beautiful city of Paris. Even though I am sure you're tired from your travels, I will need you to meet me very early tomorrow morning, Sunday, August 19th at 6.40 a.m. Promise it will be worth the effort. Okay, number two, I will need you to meet me at the following cafe, which is only steps away from your hotel. I've attached a map as well. And he said, very important, I will need you to meet me in that summer dress matching the gray suit that I'll be wearing at precisely 6.40 a.m. in front of the cafe. See you in the morning, mon amour. Mick. It's now Sunday, August 19th, 2018, and I believe I woke up at like 5 a.m. in the morning because, you know, I had to do my hair, my makeup, get my dress on, and make sure I looked really good. So I did that, and I remember I was just like so nervous as I was getting ready. I was just like, holy crap, it's happening. Oh my God, I think it's happening, as in like, we're getting engaged, I don't know, something is happening, I'm gonna meet him again, like, wow! <laughs> but I got myself together and I was on time, everything running smoothie, I was like, okay, great, this is perfect, I'm gonna make it on time. So, <laughs> So I go downstairs and I've got my map with me. This one was like very straightforward. It was literally a five minute walk from the hotel. And I just thought like, how badly can I really screw this up? And I get out of the hotel and I make a left, which is what I thought I was supposed to do. And so I keep going and then I'm just like, I feel like I should have been there by now. I just have this gut feeling that like I did not go the right way. So I remember like running across the street in my heels, in my little summer dress, and I saw a man standing outside of a hotel and I asked him, I showed him the map and he was like, you have to go that way. And I was like, are you kidding me right now? I start like booking it. I am running full out in my heels and dress and I'm just like, holy crap, I can't believe I screwed this up so badly. And Mick later told me at this time, because like he gave me very clear instructions, like I had to be there at 6 40. So at that moment that I was like running late, he thought that I got cold feet and that I was not showing up. And he was just like, oh my God, I can't believe it. I planned all of this. <laughs> like I took her to another country. We're here together and she's not coming. Like he, he honestly thought that like that was it. I was just like, I was just not coming. So anyways, as I'm running, I had saw him in the street. I'll never forget that moment. Um, 
He was in his suit. There was literally nobody on the street. We're just us two meeting in the street of Paris after not having seen each other for three days. And it was just, it was so surreal. It was like completely in a movie. And I just remember from that moment on, like time just kind of like stopped for a moment. So we start walking and eventually we end up at the Trocadero. And I was like, holy crap, like, Oh my god i didn't even realize like this is we were so close to this this whole time and so we walk there and i just remember like it was so calm there was literally not a single person there and i remember as we were walking we were like walking down the steps to go just to the right of the eiffel tower we then were standing in front of the eiffel tower the sun is rising and we're standing parallel to it and he finally pulls out the final letter <sighs> okay i haven't read this for a while now i feel like i'm gonna start crying when i read it but i'm gonna just try to hold it together Okay, my love, from the very moment I met you on that fateful summer evening all those seasons ago, I knew that there was something so distinctly unique and so distinctly beautiful about you. Sorry, guys. <laughs> guys, I'm also eight months pregnant, so I'm really, really emotional right now. <clears throat> That July evening was the beginning of an incredible compilation of chapters in both of our lives. Chapters that have brought us too many experiences of joy, laughter, and love to even begin to count. I can only dream that from this day forward, we can begin the next part of our story that is even more captivating and dear to the heart than anything written so far. As the days, months, and years have passed, my admiration and love for you has only continued to grow. This is a lot harder <laughs> to read than I thought it was gonna be. You are to me, inside and out, the most incredible and beautiful woman. You are my better half. You are the one I wanna spend the rest of my journey with. The stars have so faithfully aligned to bring you and I together in this magical city where love itself was born. I can only dream that you will add to the magic of this place by saying yes to the following question. And then he got down on one knee and asked me to marry him. I obviously said yes. Uh, we are married. I'm eight months pregnant. And yeah, that is the story of our engagement. So after I had said yes and we kissed and we were standing there and I was just like so so excited so happy I just remember we were hugging and all of a sudden like you know your senses start to kick in again and I just like hear click 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 I realized that there was a photographer who was taking pictures of everything the whole time so Mick had actually arranged for this photographer to photograph our engagement and then right after like he revealed himself and we met him uh mick told me that we were going to do a photo shoot around paris for the next couple of hours we were now going to do our engagement shoot in paris we drove around paris and walked around paris and took a bunch of photographs which i will share with you right now <music> Thank you. 
Bonjour. Bonjour. Thank you so much for watching and walking down memory lane with me of just the most incredible moment of my life that I will absolutely never ever forget. If you enjoyed watching this video, I would love for you to give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you have not already done so. It really helps support my channel so that I can keep making and sharing these videos with you guys. Thank you so much again for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!